Hello YouTube and a big welcome back to Navisim 101 and welcome to the south of France and we are in Nice Côte d'Azur and we're just above the airport here in Nice and it's a very very beautiful town here right along the uh, the French Riviera been here a couple of times a very nice uh, town and Monaco is not too far away from here about 30 minutes bus ride take the 100 bus from the center of town and uh, very soon you're in Monaco Cannes as well is not too far short train ride as well a very nice beautiful town of Cannes so uh, we're here today and we're going to be having a look at the A320 Airbus, the NEO and just having a look at the radio system there. So we'll be using the Voilin.com uh, A320 fly-by-wire NEO today. Uh, but very nice delivery though, uh, Lincoln Europe, excellent. Okay, so I think that the uh, ramp connection, I think it's now docked, so just for us to uh, navigate our way up the stairs excellent okay and let's just get into the A320 Airbus so welcome once again to the cold and dark cockpit of the A320 Neo Airbus so let's just jump straight into the captain's seat shall we okay so before we put power to the aircraft as customary we're just going to go through a few checks uh, which is just to make sure the parking brake is set and the uh, engine mode selector is norm. Both engine masters are off, t cat is on standby, throttle is yep, in idle <laughs> and also the landing gear is down. Okay, now just looking up we have the uh, window wipers are off and uh, voltage is a bit low actually, 25.4. Okay, well there we go so let's just turn on the bats okay batteries are on and then we'll just extern we just uh, select external power and we can turn some lights on and we'll put the nav lights on as well just to show we're on board and I suppose we can get rid of some of these uh, white lights. Uh, just get rid of the fuel pumps or turn them on. Okay. Right, still more lighting. Actually, do you know what? While we're here, actually, it's best just to get the um, ADAS uh, up and running. It's going to take about seven minutes, so... Probably have to jump forward in that one. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Uh, got lights all over the place, haven't we, on this one? Oh, okay. Um, what else? Yeah, on the right side. Okay, and we just turn up the floodlights a little bit. It'll be pretty dark soon, actually. It's about uh, it's about uh, half past uh, five now in the evening. Okay, so I think that should do us. So we've got seven minutes left on the alignment. So I'll, I'm not going to wait here for seven minutes. I'm just going to try and uh, just move that forward actually down to a minute. Uh, so we're going to be looking at the relationship between uh, this module here called the Electronic Flight Instrument System, or the EFIS for short, and how that relates to the uh, uh, multifunction control display unit, uh, or the MCDU, and the uh, radio management panels, or the RMPs, as they are otherwise known, and the audio control panels, or the ACP. So we'll just have a little uh, brief look at all of these and uh, really just see how they could actually be of assistance to us if uh, in some situations we might not have the MCDU. Right, 
So one of the ways in which an Airbus pilot would actually program or set up the MCDU for flight is by using a simple acronym called DIFSRIP. So you may have heard of that. It's D-I-F-S-R-I-P. And um, basically what they would do is just go through uh, the first letter of some of these buttons. So for example, uh, DATA. Uh, that would be the first one, part of the uh, first part of the acronym, DIFS RIP. So uh, D I initialization page, and uh, this is the first initialization page. So we could call it init page A, if you like, which contains a root and various other things as well. And uh, then it goes straight to flight plan, which is the F. Okay, and then secondary flight plan, which is not yet modelled on the uh, A320 uh, fly-by-wire Airbus NEO and then we end up with the RAD nav page after that okay from there would move back to the init page and then you'd go to init page I suppose we can call it B which enters the zero fuel weight and the block fuel and after that you'd end up with the P part of the diffs rip acronym uh, which is not not program <laughs> perf. All right, so uh, that it, it is is the disrep uh, formula, if you like. So uh, maybe if we're new to the Airbus, it might actually um, be new to us, and it might actually could help in programming of the MCDU. But what this video is all about, as explained, is about the radio section, and the reason being because. I haven't really given this page the time of day, uh, to be honest with you, uh, because once you put your ILS in then and you have your flight plan, then that's it. You don't really need to actually put VORs in. But the, the problem arises that if your ILS for some reason gets messed up on approach and you need to quickly uh, f uh, find out where you are, radio navs towards the airport and so on and so forth, then really you should have this ready. and. Uh, waiting for you to use it so uh, yeah that's the reason why I've decided to make this video <laughs> to try and get myself out of bad habits and uh, hopefully if you've got into those bad habits as well it might actually help you too so and that's what we're going to have a look at uh, today okay so just having a look at the radio nav page in a bit more detail so we've got VOR1 it's ident and the frequency and then we have VOR2 as well. So uh, now, there's a couple of ways to tune a VOR1 in the box, as it's sometimes called by A320 pilots. Uh, one of them is to just put the frequency in. Now, I can't remember too many frequencies, so uh, another easier way to do it is to just find out what the ident of, or the identity name, if you like, of the VOR1 is. So, to do that, all we have to do is just go up to the EFIS, okay, and select this one here, VORD. Push that in, and then if you have a look at the uh, navigation data, or display, should I say, you can see actually the, the VORs in the vicinity. So, let's just actually turn this selection knob to VOR. Right, that's a little bit better. So, now we can see uh, some of the VORs in the vicinity. If you actually want to see more VORs in the vicinity, if they are there, then you would actually use this knob and uh, just to increase, increase the range of it. Uh, so we can actually see some more. You've got ALB and others, STP, HYE. Okay, so cool. Now let's just bring that back. Right, so we have a selection of VORs. Now, uh, let's just tune in the AZR VOR. Okay, so we're going to do that. Uh, Alpha Lima Zulu. Okay, so we're going to tune that in. And we do that by transferring it from the scratch pad to the VOR, whichever VOR you like. So we'll do that, Click that now and see what happens. Not in database. I don't believe that. <laughs> That's not true. That is not true. Okay, so let's just go A... Oh, maybe I typed it in wrong, actually. Probably did. Uh, A Z R. Z R. Okay. Yeah, I typed something else in. Okay. There we go. 
there it is okay so uh, we've now got that into the system that's AZR now we have our CDI our course deviation uh, indicator needle and if we actually go up to the EFIS and we select VOR 1 and there it gives us more information about the VOR we just tuned so we can see VOR 1 Azer 0 0.5 nautical miles that's the closest one to us almost and that is the direction in which it's pointing now if you remember on GA aircraft you have like a, an OBS dial um, there isn't a dedicated course dial on the uh, Airbus so uh, for this one we have to actually tune it digitally all right so that it's pointing in the direction that we want to go all right so at the moment this needle is pointing to one two five degrees one two six or one two seven okay let's just go for one two seven type in one two seven transfer that from the scratch pad to the course okay so that's here so we put that in the course uh, field we'll transfer that and see what happens there you go right that now is actually tracking our VOR cool all right and you can do the same thing for VOR too let's just uh, do another one NIS NIS might be a good one so let's do NIS N I Z and then we'll put that into into here VOR uh, 2 and see what happens okay right it's in there but nothing has changed nothing's changed now let's just uh, go back up to the EFIS select VOR 2 all right now you can see that the VOR2 symbol, which is slightly different from VOR1, okay, is up in the uh, navigational display. All right, so that's VOR2, good. And now to tune its course, now let's see if this works. Are we going to get two course needles? Um, what's the radial on that one? The radial is 5. 10, 15, 20, 12, 30. So this is uh, 10, 15, 14, maybe. Let's put 0, 1, 4 and put that there and see what happens. Oops, sorry. Right, 0, 1, 4. Okay, now there's no coarse deviation needle for VOR2. Okay, seems like it's just for VOR1. Alright, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to clear that. Let's take off VOR1. And now to clear the VORs, all you have to do is just click on the clear button and then transfer that CLR to the uh, VOR you want to get rid of. Right, now we're left with... Ah, okay. So it looks like that you, you can't have both of them okay so all right okay well we'll accept that <laughs> okay so now let's just uh, check that by changing the course and uh, let's have a look so zero one five and we'll put that in just watch that needle all right well, let's move that a bit all right well we get the idea we don't have to tune it right now uh, but that basically is what what you'd use to tune that okay so that's VOR both your was we've had a look at that all right now uh, let's go down to oops sorry about that this is keys uh, so let's clear that let's clear the VOR right now let's go down to our um, ILS frequency okay so now to get that I'll have to uh, bring up Ablesoft EFB and if you haven't yet seen my tutorial on AF Avlosoft EFB, that's if you have it, this software, really, really good software, would recommend it, definitely. Top class. <laughs> and uh, they've only just recently updated it for MSFS 2020, which is cool. 
And so, yeah, you can see that the two tutorial, full tutorial did um, videos on uh, Ablesoft EFB on the channel. Now, we're looking at, let's just get rid of this. Uh, now, we're looking at um, ILSs. Okay, so at niche, there's ILS for runway 04 left and 04 right. So let's tune into a zero four right, shall we? So one one zero decimal seven zero. Uh, let's see what that does. Okay, uh, one one zero decimal. Okay, let's go up here. Whoops, sorry. One one zero decimal. What did I say? Terrible memory. One one zero decimal seven zero. Yeah, I thought it was. <laughs> okay, so decimal seven zero. So let's just click that. Okay, and put that in there. See what happens. Right now, it's actually into the system because you have the um, identifier here. Okay, and what we have to do really to get it is just is go down to the uh, LS section here, and we can actually click the. Uh, landing system as well so you can see it on the uh, primary flight display here and up in the right hand corner you'll see all the information okay it's um, frequency it's course and the ILS runway 04 right okay now um, we can't actually change the course of the ILS because that's fixed it's, it's a runway the runway doesn't move and that's why the course uh, box here is actually greyed out because you, know, you just don't move an ILS um, heading, do you? So uh, that's why that is like that. Okay, now it's displayed in magenta and generally on the A320 Airbus anything magenta is managed by the system. Anything blue is selected. Okay, it's just like these here, we've selected all these in blue. Okay, so that is the ILS and now let's unselect that and let's put that back okay now moving on to the ADF okay so let's clear that so it doesn't get in the way we'll clear that all right uh, right now moving on to the ADF uh, frequency what we have to do is go up to our EFIS once again and click on NDB Okay, now you can see that we have a couple of uh, NDBs in the area. So we have the November Charlie, and I think that is the Charlie Sierra Charlie uh, NDB. All right, so once again, we can actually just tune in the identifier code. So let's tune in November Charlie. Okay, and enter that into ADF1 right now we've actually got a selection duplicate names to choose from now let's just choose the closest one to us right there okay now that is actually gone into the in, into the field and then we get a ADF1 a beat frequency oscillator up as well Okay, and it's uh, pulsating for some reason, not sure why. Uh, right, now what we need to do is switch on to ADF1, and there we have it. We have 338, but no distance measuring for us on that one there. Okay, and no course indicator needle. It should be there actually, it should be this needle here pointing towards wherever the VOR is, which is obviously. Uh, not VOR, sorry, NDB, this way. Okay, so uh, that is actually there. Let's just see if there's any more NDBs in the area. Okay, so we have the MUS NDB. All right, so let's just uh, try and uh, tune that one in. So, uh, so Mike Uniform Sierra, and uh, we'll just put that one in into the um, ADF2. Right, and once again we have a selection of two. 
So we'll tune the closest one in. And it's on a 428 degree frequency rather. And right. So what we'll do, we'll click on ADF2 up on the EFIS. And uh, once again, we have the symbol and information, but no ADF needle. Okay, so ADF, if, they, if I didn't say, if I didn't tell you, it uh, stands for Automatic Direction Finder. And uh, the NDBs that it tunes are called non directional beacons. All right, so uh, no, no, nothing there. So perhaps that's going to be modeled at some point in the future. Maybe they're not too <laughs> fussed about that at the moment, the fly by wire team. Okay, so uh, that is the um, yeah, that's the end. That's the ADS or NDBs. Now you have this here, the beat frequency oscillator. They're not modeled at, modeled at the moment. And to be honest with you, um, I mean, it, it is actually modeled in the Aerosoft Airbus, but it, really, it's it's a Morse code connected um, to the ADF. So not really much call for it, really. So basically, that is the radio navigation page. There is not anything more to show about that page, to be honest with you. All right, so what I'm going to do is just clear uh, these frequencies. Okay, just clear that one and clear that one as well. Okay, so and just switch this across. Uh, let's turn these off. Okay, so moving down to uh, this page now. So this is your RMP panel. Now, just to say that uh, we have three of these, or we should have three of them, okay? Uh, so this is RMP1, and this is for the captain. Now, over here is RMP, is RMP2, all right? And that's for the first officer. Now, there is a third RMP, which should be round about here, but it's not actually modeled yet. And what the RMP3 is um, designated for is the ACAR system, which is, uh, which we'll find down here. So this is your ACARs, uh, inoperative at the moment, and not working, so perhaps uh, it will be at some point. So uh, this is your ACP3, and that's where your RMP3 should be. So that really is, is really just for um, data, but it does work off your VHF frequencies okay but we have RMP 1 and 2 all right now the good thing about this is that if you have a look at the frequencies you can see that you've got VHF 1 VHF 2 and 3 all right now this is pretty it's pretty handy because you can actually store two frequencies on each of these so you have you know you can actually just uh, st store these two so this is obviously standby and that will obviously go in there once you press the transfer button and the same thing for VHF 2 and 3 as well you can store uh, different frequencies in those all right and just change it just to show there you go okay um, and just change change that Right, VHF three and VHF one. So you literally got about six frequencies you can store. Now this is this is really handy for those of us who fly on VATSIM. You could actually enter um, one frequency for delivery controller, another one for the ground, another one for tower one for departure, one for center, and so on and so forth. So all, we, all you'd have to do is just switch this and uh, uh, click the transfer button and there you, you're on. So I think that's really, really handy. Now, as regards this ATC dialog, I, I'm not a keen fan of, it, fan of it, to be honest with you. I'd much rather, rather just uh, do as they do in the real world and scroll to the frequency that I need. But uh, there we have it. Um, it's been with us for a long time. It's on P3D. Uh, it's been on, I think, FS2004, FSX. So it's, I think it's going to be with us 
And uh, to some degree, we can't actually deal without it, to be honest with you. Uh, but it's here. But it doesn't actually work fully in sync with this one. So, for example, I, I click it to COM1. All right. Now, this is on COM1. All right. And this is VHF1 is linked to COM1. Okay. It should change. All right. It's changed now. All right. And if I click on this one, two. It really is not letting me click. Let's try three. There we go. It's gone over to three. All right. So this VHF3 um, corresponds with this VHF3 here. By the way, the um, actually let's just the, the knobs actually do work. So let's just tune an ATIS. So let's just tune that ATIS there. Okay. And there you go. That's COM3, but it's on COM2, so let's turn, turn up to COM3, right, so what you're listening to is VHF of actually COM2, while we were on COM3, <laughs> alright, so let's COM3, let's just tune uh, another ATIS 136, right, you know, is it hasn't actually put the frequency into the active, but we can still listen to it. And these volume knobs actually do work. Let's let that. No. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because it's. No, I'm not going to spend too much time on it because it's it is half working and it's uh, not working. So let's just uh, get rid of that. All right. So let's just get get rid of this because <laughs> it's just not. No, let's get rid of that. Okay. Cool. So. Now, let's move on to uh, what's uh, more important. All right, so we've spoken about that. Now, just having a look at these frequencies, HF. Now, you can actually see the digits here for these, but they're not really uh, used on the, um, on the SIM, on the aircraft. Okay, so we'll just skip over those. And I think not even in the real world they'll be using the high frequencies uh, or AM frequencies at all. All right, but what we do have here, we have a cell button. All right, now the reason for this button, if we change the view, is that if you see this lit up, then it means that this RMP2 is on the same frequency. So let's say, for example, tune uh, VHF frequency one. Okay, now it's still not lit up, but if we select the co-pilot's radio to VHF1, you notice then it's actually lit up there. So uh, basically it tells um, each pilot whether the other RMP panel is actually tuned to the same fre frequency and that's the sole function of the cell light. Okay. Right, now moving down to this section here. So all these buttons along here are your standby navigation. All right. So if we look closely, you actually can see uh, there's a glass on top of this. So I'll click it. Can you see it? It really is clear. <laughs> you just about see. You can even see a reflection on it, which is really cool. All right. So these are your standby uh, navigation buttons. All right. Now... Watch what happens when I actually do you know what? Yeah, yeah, okay. Watch what happens when I actually click the uh, nav button. You see what happened up at the top on the MCDU? I'll do it again. Okay. So basically, when you actually turn on this standby nav, it actually switches these off completely. Okay, now the aircraft is solely going to be. Um, at the command, if you like, um, on these VOR buttons. 
So let's now have a look at this and let's say, for example, tune in VOR1. Okay, so if I can get a, a view of everything. All right, so around about there will do. So uh, tune in VOR1. Let's just select VOR1 first of all. Okay, now we need to find a VOR in the area. I can't remember the figures, the frequencies for the other ones we tuned in. So let's just uh, get them up. Oops, there we go again. Right, so we said the... Uh, let's have a look at the Azure. What was the Azure? 10965. Okay, now on this one you will have to actually remember the frequency <laughs> because uh, there's no... Um, opportunity to actually or facility to actually put the identifiers in so uh, let's tune 10965 10965 okay and transfer it over right now you can see here the um, ND has come alive and that's because we've actually tuned in, they go 10965, okay, the course is 000, okay, as you can see there, and he got the identifier right there, okay, so, now, the course, if I just can't try and get a better view of this, so we can actually see it all together, right, so the course at the moment is 000, so let's actually tune the uh, put the identifier on and that's I think it's going to be VOR1 right so once again we've, we're we're tuning to oh, I think 126 so let's just tune 126 alright now this is basically uh, your course knob now so 126 alright you notice that it doesn't move when we're turning this the course knob so to actually get that to move, we'll have to uh, transfer it across to the active. And there you can see it's actually almost centered the CDR needle. So it's a weird way of doing things. Uh, it's almost as if you're transferring that um, frequency, that course, into this here. Now, you notice here that we've got another standby frequency so let's tune another VOR okay so what's another one um, so we've got Azure which we've just tuned and uh, let's go for uh, let's go for CGS that's the uh, Can Sumer VOR so CGS let's do that oh actually do you know what Need to get the frequency. Uh, so 10920, 109 decimal 20. So let's do that. 109 and it's decimal 20. Right, so now what we're doing, we're actually taking this figure, this frequency, and putting it into the box. Okay, there we go. 10920. Course at the moment is 125, whereas the, the, the radial is pointing to uh, say 245 degrees right if I bring this up what is it saying here uh, let's have a look it's saying 041 degrees okay right well let's just go back down here and let's see what we can do with this one so uh, 125 24 uh, that's 250, let's say 245, 246. So we'll just tune that 246. Two, four, two, four, and uh, what we need to do now is just press the transfer button. And there you go. We've actually transferred that across. So how this works is it's almost like a cycle. You, you've got two frequencies which are con and, and two standby um, um, headings which, which you're constantly cycling as you press this button. It's just cycling it round and that, that's, that's how, it's, how it's working. 
Uh, let's have a look. We've got VOR2 here. We can put up. Okay. Um, right. So it doesn't seem as if it's working on the VOR2. I think it's probably just putting into VOR1 and just cycling it round. You can see here the identifier uh, CGS there and the distance. Okay. So that is uh, generally how the standby radio works. Now you have the ILS which is here okay so now let's actually put the ILS in and see what that does. What was that ILS uh, frequency? Uh, let's I think it was let's go for 109 let's try 109 is it 95? Actually let's bring it up Alright, so runway zero four right. Oh, you got let's actually go four uh, four left. One zero nine nine five. Okay. So one zero nine nine five and then we transfer that across. Let's just watch the display here. Alright. Uh let's go let's switch this on to landing system. Right, there we go. It's actually tuned at 10995. And once again, uh, on a heading of 042 degrees. Okay, and the course obviously is 000 because you cannot tune, uh, you cannot adjust a uh, runway heading. And that is it. That is the uh, ILS part of the of the standby radio system. All right now this one next to it is MLS. This, this is your microwave landing system which obviously is not modelled yet. Apparently a, a slightly more sophisticated system than the ILS apparently. Um, and then you have your ADF and your uh, BFO as well which works in harmony with the uh, ADF. Now uh, Let's just try and tune in. Now, I do know the frequency of the ADF. That's the last one we tuned, didn't we? So let's just uh, try and go up to 338. And see what happens. Okay, let's go back a bit. 338, right? And... Right, let's try and transfer that. Okay, so well, let's... Let's uh, try and uh, get rid of the ILS. Right, ILS is gone, and let's get rid of the uh, VOR just to try and clear the screen a bit. Okay, so where were we? We were on ADF. Okay, 338. Let's transfer that across. Right, nothing. <laughs> There's nothing here for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, okay, let's just uh, try and flick this. This might help. All right, ADF one, nothing. ADF two, nothing. So obviously, at the moment, that is not modelled. For some reason. Yeah, don't know why. I tell you what, I'm going to try another. Let's try another. So let's just get our. Uh, uh, let's just get another NDB up. So let's try the uh, uh, CANS uh, uh, NDB, which is CSC. All right. I think we used that one before, didn't we? Um, oh, sorry. I got to get the frequency. Uh, let's have a look. CSC uh, 385. All right. Let's try 385. And let's transfer that back so we can navigate there more easily. Uh, 385. Ah, there we go. 385. Okay, let's just bring it back up one. And let's transfer that across and see what happens, if anything happens. No. No, not working. Okay, so, well, that is it. So we've got both of them switched. Let's just turn this on, actually, to nav and see if that makes any difference. No. Arc. No. No, there's nothing. Okay, so I think we can just accept that it's not modelled at the moment. Right. So, 
Uh, that is about it, really, for for this tutorial. There's nothing more uh, that I can think of to show you on uh, as regards uh, using the standby navigation system. Okay, we can see that uh, it's working partially, and we can actually tune uh, VORs and ND uh, well, not NDBs, but VORs and ILS frequency. Okay, so yes, that's about it. So. I uh, just really want to thank you all for watching this uh, brief tutorial uh, on the Radio Nav system on the A320 Airbus Neo. So if you did enjoy the video, please do like and subscribe uh, to the channel to help the channel to grow. And uh, I look forward to uh, the next video and uh, bye for now.